a cushion life Anybody can be somebody eh? Through development and building one's capacity Financially, health-wise Everyone can be better Cause we're taking you higher eh? You can be entertaining, so educated Making you so independent Through Family is society's most common, best known physical, relational, as well as symbolic space. It is in the context of family relationships as they are socially defined and regulated that life defining events and processes are translated into individual experiences. For example, when you are born, you are born into a royal family, they say, oh, it's of the blue blood. When you are born into a religious family, they say, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a Christian family and so on and so forth. So our birth, our death, our growing up, our living, everything, many a times is conceptualized within the space of the family. As we shall see, the family is also a privileged arena for social construction of reality, our reality. I, uh, sometimes in the, I mean, this week, I was talking to a group of people um, and I told them about how one Padi Adeluga 29 year old as at that time, attempted to buy Chevron, Netherlands. And he almost did. 29 year old. Why there are some 29 year olds that are still living within their family space with their parents? That will tell you about the context of his family. So, in the year 1993, the General Assembly decided that the General Assembly of the United Nations, by a, re by a resolution that 15th of May, of every year should be observed as the, as the International Day of Families. This day provides an opportunity to, pro, to, pro, I mean, to promote awareness of issues relating to families and to increase knowledge of the social, economic, demographic processes affecting families. On this beautiful Friday, 15th May 2020, edition of our program, Mind Well for Life and Living, which coincides with the 2020 edition of the International Day of Families, we'll be discussing the topic, family. And to discuss this topic with us, we have invited a guest, a friend, a pastor, an erudite uh, person, who will go into details concerning the issue of family. So I want you to call your loved ones, your family members, your friends, Perhaps if you have folks who you think might change when they hear the concept of family, call them together so that you can be part of the program today. But before we go full blast into the program, we'll go on a short break. Make sure you stay tuned and don't go away. Everyone needs 
a pushing life Anybody can be somebody eh? Through development and building one's capacity Financially, health-wise Everyone can be better My name is Dr. Kingsley Mayowa Okonoda I'm a consultant psychiatrist and certified management consultant. I'm the chief executive officer of Network Consult Training and Development. At Network Consult, we help individuals, organizations, and communities to actualize their potentials, to cope with normal stresses of life, work productively, and make meaningful contributions to society. We do this through our training seminars, workshops, and conferences on the issues of mental health product, uh, promotion, peak performance, management consulting, and personal development. Among trainings, seminars, workshops that we have done for individuals and organizations like this, Network Consult also holds the Strategic Planning and Goal Setting Seminar in the first week of January annually, as well as the Financial Independence and Wealth Creation Seminar on the 1st of October every year. We also have the issues of mental health promotions on the 10th of October, which is the um, World Mental Health Day, as well as the 26th of June, the International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking. We invite you to avail yourself of any of our trainings, workshops, and conferences at Network Consult so that you can have the life of abundance that you deserve. Thank you very much. A pushing life. Anybody can be somebody. On our program today, as I've introduced earlier, we'll be talking about the topic family, being the International Day of Families. And to discuss this topic with us today, we have Pastor Benson Ogbe. He's a certified relationship and marriage counselor. He's the lead mentor, Benson Ogbe Relationship Mentoring Academy as well as the lead pastor of House of Hope International Church, Church. Pastor, you are welcome. Thank you. It's, the, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for the opportunity given to me. You are welcome. Thank you. Yes. Um, pastor, our manner is that before we get to the topic, yeah. we want to get to know the person. Okay. So you are going to give us a little bit about yourself, your family background, educational background, Family background in terms of your fam the family that you are head of now, okay. not where you are coming okay. from alone, okay. as well as any other thing you think is important that people should know. Okay, um, like you said, uh, Doctor, my name is Benson Ogbe. Yes. Um, originally um, from Benue State. Okay. Yes, my parents both are from Benue State. Okay. The Doma speaking part of Benue State. Oh, yes. Yes, and I'm the first of eight children. First of eight. Yes, first of eight children. So I think that qualifies me to talk about the family because I had a very uh, good experience, mm. you know, growing up in one, mm. you know, and also um, being the first child, mm -hmm. uh, lost my parents at um, my father, first okay. of all, at the age of 20. Oh. So that conferred on me uh, leadership mm. of raising seven siblings and a very peasant, uh, very poor mother as mm. well. Mm. Okay, so the responsibility of leading the family was uh, conferred on me at a very early age of my life. Mm. Um, I think that's about that about my family. Eventually, mm -hmm. I um, I didn't grow up in, I didn't have blue blood, okay. like you said from the introduction. <laughs> I come from what I like to call mm. a very humble, very humble, you know, to sound very modest, so yes. that I don't begin to offend every other member of my family. Okay. You understand? And I come from what people like to call a very poor background. Okay. But I choose to use the word a very humble background. Okay. And then um, uh, got married at a very good age. Mm. Got married at um, uh, in my early thirties. Okay. You understand? I got married to uh, a woman I had a really a young lady I had a relationship with for. Um, known her as a friend for 12 years. Wow. Yes, we lived in the same neighborhood for upward of 12 years. 12 years. Yes. Uh, but that 12 years, we just, um, what you like to call an we are, we are acquaintances. Yes. Not a relationship. Not a relationship. Okay. But eventually, we 
we, we reconnected and okay. you know like they said sometimes old flames don't die mm -hmm. you know so it rekindled and then something uh, a love affair began all right which i got married uh the first day of our marriage okay we had a uh, first set of children twins okay and two boys and 10 years later mm -hmm. we had a little girl mm -hmm. yeah so right now i'm a father hmm. a husband of one female wife <laughs> yes, and then um, father of three. One that currently we reside in Jersey Town. Nine, ten years in this city of Jersey now. Wow. Yes. That's interesting. Yes. I think that is um, something that we could actually put into a book. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's, if that's elaborate enough, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. Um, however, there are a number of things that you have said there. Yes. That's uh, interesting to me. Okay. You lost your father at the age of 20. Yes. So you, you step into leadership. At a very early age. At a very early age. Yes. You are husband of one female. Yes. Not male. Not, female. not two. No. That already is setting the tone for our discussion. Okay. Oh, that's uh, cool. And of course, you have um, children. Yes. It's all right. Yes. So yes. you are a family. Three biological children. Three biological children. I'm sure you have a lot of spiritual children. Yeah, of course. <laughs> However, um, I know that people can go to pastoral school, and yes, yes. but most people will have gone into school, um, secular education, secular education and yes. Can you give us a brief? Okay, um, I had my primary school somewhere in the city of Kaduna because I was born and raised in Kaduna. Okay. Yes, and then uh, my primary school in Kaduna. Okay. Um, then secondary school also in Kaduna. Okay. Then went to university, Bellevue State University. Mm. I'm what you like to call a field lawyer before becoming a pastor. Okay. Because I did, I studied law. You studied law? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. So, um, even though I, I sometimes um, um, like to tell a lot of people that care to hear mm -hmm. that I'm what you call a university dropout. Why do you say so, sir? Uh, because I eventually uh, dropped out of school okay. uh, at the stage in my. Uh, university education. Okay. Yes. I dropped out and then eventually that was when I was saddled with the responsibility of raising the family at a very young age. Mm. And then after I got a little bit of respite, mm. um, at that time I was sure that um, uh, I had received the call of God into ministry and that was what um, um, changed my, 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 my direction as far as uh, education. Is concerned, so I decided to pursue uh, 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 theology in order to qualify as a pastor, mm. and that was how I found myself in the Bible school. Okay. Yes, and then from there uh, came out and uh, mm. eventually started pastoring also. You know, very when I said at the beginning that mm. um, it is worthy of putting down as a donor for, <laughs> I was actually joking. But now it's getting clearer. Clara, okay. <laughs> okay. There's a lot That's to talk something. about. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Now, you talked about calling. Yes, sir. Um, and you said change your direction and all that. Yes. You must have been very convinced about this. I know that there are a number of people watching us at home now. Yes. And I've actually also handled a number of cases of people who said they are called, but at the end of the day, we saw that, okay, they were presumptuous yeah. and all that. They had a flash. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the question is that. Why and how did you, were you that convinced? Because obviously Okay, let me start first of all, I'll tell, tell yes. you, share my experience with you. Yes. Um, when, before my father died, my mm. father was seriously ill. Okay. Yeah, and then, um, uh, then I was with my dad in Bay State in okay. Makodi. And then, uh, at that, before then, before he became sick, mm. I had not been to a church for uh, close to two years. Yes, I've never gone to any church for close to two years two at years. that time. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, because I've left my mom, my mom, a Catholic, mm -hmm. who was, was responsible for all of our church activities. Mm -hmm. Since I was no longer with her, mm -hmm. it became very easier for me to just do what I wanted. Mm -hmm. So at that time, I was no longer attending any church mm -hmm. for close to two years. Mm -hmm. And so um, I started, um, there was a church around my area then. Mm -hmm. The man was on TV, so every evening I watched him on TV, mm. and he was speaking life. Okay. You know, I was getting blessed. Mm. And um, so one day, when my dad became sick, I went to visit my dad in the hospital. And I saw that the situation was very critical. Mm. 
Um, the only thing I could do then was to pray. So I prayed. They prayed the prayer that day. Because before then, uh, let me, let me uh, go back a little. Before that time, mm. I, I started sensing the call of God upon my life. Okay. I, I was sensing it. It was more of something I encountered in the dream. Sometimes mm. I just sense it. Mm. When I see a preacher preaching, something keep, you know, nudging me and telling me that's what yeah. God was doing. Yes, even while I was in school. Mm. So I, I was ignoring that. Mm. So when my dad was sick, I started praying for my dad to be mm. well. So I prayed a prayer. I was, I was, it was an ignorant prayer, but I mm. felt I was going to use it to bribe God. So I said something like, um, if God healed my dad, mm. I was going to preach the gospel. Mm. I said, I said, God, okay, let's strike a deal. I know you are nudging me and trying to get my attention into ministry. If you heal my dad, I, I can assure you that after school, I'm going to go into ministry and preach the gospel. Mm. So I said that, and I had peace in my heart. Mm. So I thought God was going to heal my dad. Okay. So my dad eventually died, like months later. Mm. And so I told God, I said, well, it therefore means, in the place of prayer also, it therefore means that... Uh, I shouldn't bother about it since God didn't keep his own end of the bargain. <laughs> Do you understand? So I left. Mm -hmm. So I kept watching that preacher on TV, Dr. Isaac Soon. Okay. Uh, he's a thief man in Bering State. Okay. So one day, um, uh, a friend of mine decided to take me to the church. I went to the church and mm -hmm. the man was preaching. Mm -hmm. And then I walked to the altar and gave my life to Christ on that day. Mm -hmm. So when I gave my life to Christ on that day, I came back home, slept that night. And I had that revelation I had again. Mm. And God reminded me and said, you know, you had uh, said to me that you wanted to preach the gospel. If I heal your dad, I didn't heal your dad. Mm. Will you still preach the gospel? Mm. So because of the excitement of my newfound um, life in Christ, mm. I, I said to God that I was going to hit that call. Mm. At that stage, it was more something I was taking, you know, like a joke. But yes, after my dad died, I returned back to the city of Kaduna. Mm. You know, I was shortly between Kaduna and Makodi for some time. Mm. And then one day I went to a service, and the man of God uh, spoke into my life and mentioned that God was calling me to ministry, mm. but I was running away. So I still didn't believe it because that was not for me a standard. Mm. I didn't think I was caught up for ministry. for ministry. I didn't think so. For the next uh, 13 months, I didn't do anything about that until... I was struck down with a particular illness, mm. you know, and then um, that was when Jesus himself appeared to me. And mm. then, uh, Pastor, yes, sir. I think we might have to have another edition. Okay, for my for, testimony. For this testimony. Yes. Um, how be it, you have already touched on certain areas okay. of the family. Your dad, your mom, yeah. you being the first of, of, of eight children mm. and all that. Now, what is the family? I know that these are things that people will take for granted, mm. that everybody knows. Yes. But what do you mean the family? Well, um, I like the simplest of definitions. Okay. There are several definitions mm. of what a family is. Mm. And I also want to um, wish you a happy you know, family day. Thank you. you know, yes. um, and, viewers that, and viewers at home also. Exactly. Well, I like to give the most simplest of definitions. A family is a group of people okay. um, that consists of a father, mother, okay. and children okay. living in one household. Okay. That for me is the simplest okay. of definition. Hmm. But it can go beyond that. It could okay. be a group of people that are connected by blood, by blood. ethnicity, okay. and sometimes by tribe. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, um, being a pastor, you probably have heard about people talking about you are Christians, about the family of God. Yes. Would that also qualify as family? Yes, in a broader perspective, that also can qualify, okay. you know. Um, but I, I believe strongly that mm. in a, on a day like this, we're talking about uh, the smallest unit of the family, mm. which is family that are connected by blood. Mm. By extension, the family can grow just beyond people who are connected by blood, mm -hmm. people who have shared, shared same beliefs, mm -hmm. you know, same, um, uh, like I said, ethnicity, mm -hmm. people who have the same culture, mm -hmm. can categorize themselves as a family okay. in a much more broader way. Uh, um, you know, context. context, yes. However, now you have said father, mother, and children, children yes. And there are variations to this. Well, um, uh, like what we have today, mm -hmm. you know, uh, there are several variations. Mm -hmm. You know, when we were in school, we were taught about nuclear extended families. Yes. <laughs> you understand? And uh, in Africa, for example, mm -hmm. where we, we were very communal in our living, mm -hmm. like somebody once said that. Uh, Sometimes those who don't consider family 
in Nigeria, when you go abroad, some a friend of mine was telling me while he was in Russia, um, he was in Russia one day, living, he's living in Russia until now, and while he was there, and lived in a white, predominantly white, you know, uh, community. And so one day he saw a, his uh, Yoruba by tribe, and then he saw uh, a man wearing one of these Igbo attire, a black man wearing this Igbo attire. And he went to him and he said, are you from Nigeria? He said, yes, you are my brother. You understand, we are one family. Yeah, exactly. And so you see, uh, those are some of the variations mm -hmm. you can get. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it, uh, the family mm -hmm. can, be, can go beyond just father, mother, and children. Mm -hmm. You understand, they can, you can define it as the people who share common beliefs, mm -hmm. common ideology, mm -hmm. cultures, and, and, and religion. As, as Africans, is polygamy is accepted in our cultural practices. And yes. I'm not talking in terms of the race system and all that. Yes. We also have faith that that frowns. Yes, I believe that and that and there are faith that frowns. But we are talking generally. Generally, now yes. Because we are talking about community of people, mm. human humanity, human beings Absolutely. and all that. Absolutely. So, um, what are the and of course there are also families in which we have single parents. Yes. By virtue of um, I mean by providence. Or somebody, the father died before the mother could give back. Yeah. Or even people out of wedlock and things like that. Yeah. And some people. Can you align some of this? Maybe based on all this, there, there are people who are making, how do I say, matraki. Mm -hmm. The woman is the one that is the mother in, mm -hmm. rather than the man being the whatever. Exactly. There are a, a number of. Yeah, like, yeah, like you rightly mentioned, mm -hmm. ours is a society where, uh, generally speaking, polygamy mm -hmm. is not found out. Yes. You know, it's accepted in our culture. Mm -hmm. uh, majority of us, mm -hmm. if not directly, indirectly, mm -hmm. at some point, uh, have experienced polygamy. Mm -hmm. You know, you know either an uncle mm -hmm. or your grandfather, mm -hmm. you know. And so polygamy is an accepted uh, form of marriage mm -hmm. as far as Africa is concerned. Okay. And so it therefore means that the family can be larger than that, the small, the small unit we, we just defined mm -hmm. from the onset of this program. Mm -hmm. And like you said, there are cultures also in the world where they are, they are, they are more matriarchal in their thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody said if you go to America, for example, mm -hmm. you know, uh, single parenthood is not frowned out. Not frowned out. You understand? In fact, the young ladies are in a hurry to get pregnant mm -hmm. and so that they can get child support from the father of the baby mm -hmm. and go their way and live by themselves. Mm -hmm. I've, I've seen young ladies who said, I don't want to get married. I just want to find a fine man who looks good, uh, who resembles the kind of child I want to have, mm. and you know, find a way and get. And it seems pregnant. that those kind of things are becoming acceptable here. Yes, exactly. Even here, when yes. you watch the TV. Yes, uh, because like like I said to you, no, like I said to you, I said uh, I said from the beginning that uh, when you mention the variations of family, mm -hmm. uh, the borders are getting smaller, mm -hmm. nations, cultures are integrating, mm -hmm. and so because of that integration. Uh, importation of culture is now happening, mm. um, and when cultures are important, you must understand that family ideology will also be important. Mm. You understand? So it's now become an accepted norm. Mm. Uh, baby mamas and I don't know that baby daddies, baby daddies mm. you know, like that, also accepted. Mm. You know, in those days, it used to be said, and I mm. think I still believe that a child that is not raised the way God created it to be raised by both parents, mm -hmm. there's something missing. Something we definitely so, something we missing. However, and that explains some of the vices and yes. some of the um, social um, decadence mm. and some of the evil that we, we see in our society today because there's a disconnect. It seems to me that um, that balance is of utmost importance. Yes, uh, I, 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 I take you back to the creation when God created man. Mm. You understand? And everything that God created, the Bible said God said, so that it was mm. good. The only thing that was missing was that the man, Adam, couldn't find a connection. Mm -hmm. Because humans are gregarious mm -hmm. in nature. We are connected beings. Mm -hmm. We can't survive without connection. Mm -hmm. It creates that balance. Mm -hmm. So God said, uh, Adam couldn't find connection with people, with most with lions, with all the animals. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible said that none was found for him, fit for him. And so God created the woman. And when God created the woman, God now said, this situation is good. The only situation that was abnormal as far as God was concerned, that was not good, was that man was by himself. So any system that supports that man should function by himself to raise another human being, mm -hmm. something is there for missing. Wow. Any system that supports that man by himself or woman should raise by herself should raise, raise another, another human, human being, 
there's something wrong with yes. it. It's not, it's not good. There's no balance. Yes, no. All right. Um, viewers at home, we have been talking with uh, Pastor Benson on the issue of families. Today being the International Day of Families. And we have talked about what family entails, some different variations of family, and what seems to be normal, and what seems not to be very good. Um, when we come back, we will open the phone lines while we continue the discussion. Um, but we go on a short break now. Make sure you don't go away. Hello there. My name is Dr. Kingsley Mayowa Okonoda. I'm a consultant psychiatrist and certified management consultant. I'm the chief executive officer of Network Consult Training and Development. At Network Consult, we help individuals, organizations, and communities to actualize their potentials cope with normal stresses of life, work productively, and make meaningful contributions to society. My name is Oyewumi Ogufemi. I have been following Dr. Okonoda for a while, but last year, October 1st, I attended a seminar at NetWealth. I have been having great fears in starting up a business, which I had lots of plans, they were just on paper. But after I came to the program, he said some things that just made me forget about my fears. My business has started and it's doing very, very well. At Network Consult Limited, we invite you to avail yourself of our trainings, workshops and conferences so that you can have the life of abundance that you deserve. Thank you very much. I've been talking with Pastor Benson on the issues of family, today being the International Day of Families by the United Nations. Um, and, uh, if you want to join us on the conversation, you can call our line, our studio line 070 414 070 414 I'm sure that it will be put on your screen. And then you can also send SMS to 080-396-16946. Sorry about that. There's a mix up there. The SMS line is um, 080-561-8400. Zero eight zero five six one eight four nine six three. Now, if you are going to call us, make sure that you turn down the volume of your TV set and speak to us and hear us through your handset or your phone, or whichever one you are using. And um, you will also stand a better chance of having your SMS read when you send us SMS, because definitely I'm sure that a lot of you would like to call, and sometimes the calls. We are not able to pick all the calls, but we will be able to read your text messages. Now, uh, Pastor, yes, we have been talking about the issue of families. And one of the things that we have said is that any system that makes a man or a woman to raise another woman to on his own without uh, that balance, that balance is not really it's not the original intention. Not the original intention. Yes. However, we have people by circumstances and whatever. And now that are into single families, there are two parent families, and the children, one way or the other, feel stigmatized or feel inferior, growing up, emotional issues, and all that. How? What will you have to say? First of all, let's let's be something clear mm. that your father a child mm. is not does not make you like somebody said. Everybody can be father. Okay. Pastor, I'm happy now because a lot of people would like to. Join the conversation, okay. and we like to bring them in. No so from time to time, I will try to talk, but we lost that call. Okay. So we can go and what I'm trying to say in essence yes. is that somebody lost, you know, like you said, circumstantially, yes. he loses either a biological mother mm -hmm. or a biological father. Mm -hmm. Does not necessarily mean that there is no other opportunities created by God okay. that can fill in that vacuum. Okay. I told you how I lost my dad at the age of 20. Right. I have seven siblings. Mm -hmm. And at the very tender age of 20, mm. I stepped into that responsibility of becoming a father. Okay. I can tell you that six out of those ones that 
um, six of them, mm -hmm. today are graduates and doing well with their lives. You understand? Mm -hmm. And uh, to the glory of God, mm -hmm. um, I know that physical father was missed, but to an extent, they had a figure that was able that to play that role. Yes. Let's, let's, let's take this Hello? 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 Yes. Hello. What's your name and where are you calling from? I'm um, John B. Cruz. John B. Cruz, from where? From Catan Report. Okay, Catan Report. Yeah. All right, can you make a contribution? Well, I just want to ask a question. Okay, go ahead. So, I asked about this, uh, what I think is talking. Okay. And this is the why, although initially, you know, you know, he said to Marita, okay. he stayed together with her, mm. and at the end is that she needs their money and you have to be seen with her. Okay. Now he said, let her give you your children, I have to know about it. Okay. Then he said, let her give you your children, he said she will never give me my children. Okay. Then I will give you about that one. Okay, it's alright. Just stay tuned. Yeah. Just make sure you stay tuned. The Reverend will answer you the cost of the program. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's an interesting uh, situation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the truth of the matter is that mm -hmm. the reality of life is that there are circumstances, okay. there are events that will happen that mm -hmm. will want to tamper with the original plan of God. Okay. You understand with the, the, the right order of things. Yes. Like you mentioned now, this is. Um, a tampering. This is not the way God intends that for the family to start. Exactly. You understand? Mm -hmm. Marriage is supposed to be the platform, you know, to where begin. to begin a family. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. But then, that, that's the essence of ministry, that's the essence of uh, jobs like that you do. Yeah. When situation becomes bad, mm -hmm. then we try to remedy the situation. Yeah, right. So right now, what he needs to do, mm -hmm. as long as you are involved, mm -hmm. is to make sure that good families are involved in that conversation. All right. To get good families involved, mm -hmm. so that the right... Um, uh, decision can be taken, and we have uh, even if you go to a very same society, mm -hmm. there are there are legal procedures where children, uh, what you call now, uh, custody yes. is granted. Even in Nigeria. Even in Nigeria. Yes. Yeah. Even in Nigeria. I, I, in fact, I was went to Nigeria as well as a same yes. so, society. We have another caller here. Hello. Good evening. What's your name and where are you calling from? Ah, Zankwa in Kaduna State, but I want to know your name too. Yeah, I'm Rebecca. Rebecca from Zankwa in Kaduna State. Okay, go ahead and make a contribution. Okay. What is the situation that a man is affected with his wife and another man is just going to take care of them? Is it okay for that house? No, can you repeat your question? I said, in the situation that a man or a woman like God. Okay. Then another man, another man picked up children. Okay. Oh, another man. Okay. Yes. All right. Like, like I said, fathering mm. is not an exclusive right okay. of your biological parents. Mm. Anybody can take the role of a father. Mm. In fact, when it comes to child custody litigation, mm. Eh? Mm. the court does not consider just biological whatever. Wow. It, con it, talks, it, talk, it considers first the responsibility of fathering. Mm. Because fathering is just beyond, you know, donating uh, of spam donation. Mm. It goes beyond that. Let, 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 let's, let's take this call. Hello? 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 You are on to my wealth. All right. Thank you. So, so like she rightly said, yes. that if, if a man mm. refuses or based on whatever situation, mm. refuses to play his role as a father. Mm. Because the presence of a father in the life of any child is important to the eventual formation of that child. That child. Like somebody once said, that every society is a reflection of its family, family system. system. Do you understand? Now, so if an any other person mm. stepping to play that role, mm. that person is the one qualified to be called a father. That's there are many, like Dr. Masbro said, there are many that a, that a male is present does not mean a father is present. Wow. That a male is that present. That a male is present. Does because not mean that is present. The people are talking about absence of fathers, absence of fathers, and what are they? Okay. Hello? 
Uh, please, if you are calling at home, make sure that you turn down the volume of your TV sets. Make sure that you have what you have to say right in your mind so that we can have a meaningful conversation. Hello? Hello? What's your name and where are you calling from? Uh, I'm from Tanaki. What's the name? Uh, uh, your name, your own personal name. Okay, Sylvester. Yes. All right, can you make your contributions? Yes, uh, I don't want to start to do for uh, the people of my family. Okay, all right. And I'm prepared to what you are doing. Okay. All right, thank you very much, Sylvester from Kacha in Kaduna State. Um, we are having people from Kaduna State, my plateau people, we are expecting your calls. So, like I said, yes, sir. A father can be in the house mm. and still not be fatherly. And not be fatherly. Yes. Wonderful. So a father can be there. So if somebody steps into his position mm. and take the responsibility of fatherly, mm. which is just which is beyond the nation of spam, do you understand? Then that person is qualified to be called a father. Now you have opened up another uh, concept. Yes. Roles. You have talked about father, father. It seems to me that you are already saying being a biological father does not equate to father. No. Fathering is the role. Father is the role. What then are the things expected for the father to do in the fathering role? Okay, first of all, um, uh, fathering or being a. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Hello? You see, interrupting the, uh, the pastor here and then not being able to connect is a little bit, uh, all right. So, father, so, like I said, there are many who are in the hurry to start a family, yes. young men, mm -hmm. and their major consideration is their age. Mm. You understand? There are many boys. A boy cannot be a father. Okay. There are many children who have been fathered by boys. I want to talk about being a boy. It's not a function of age. Mm. There are people who are 48 and they are still boys. And, still boys. and there are 28 that are already men. So wow. it's not a function of age. Mm. It's a function of accepting responsibility. responsibility. So the process of fathering begins from the from from the position of understanding the responsibility of fathering. Mm. First of all, like I said, when God created Ida, mm. the, he didn't just start a family first. Mm. He needed to uh, build the capacity of Ida. I will often will tell people. God gave him that the responsibility, the responsibility before he became a husband mm. and even before he became a father. Wow. So the process of fathering begins, first of all, from the young man accepting or understanding the responsibility of fathering. Fathering is not an easy job, sir. It's not. It takes a lot mm. to be a father. Mm. It is easier to impregnate a lady. Anybody, as long as you can get a erection, you can impregnate a lady. Mm. But when it comes to the responsibility, it goes beyond that. Mm. One of the responsibilities that a father must be able to provide. Provide. Yes. Provision yes. should come naturally, for, natural for a father. Okay. Provision in the family is not an achievement for a father. Mm. Let's take this call. Hello? Hello. What's your name, Maria, and where are you calling from? My name is Peter. Your name is what? Hello? 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 You are on to Mind Wells. You are connected. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hello? Alright. What's your name and where are you calling from? I'm calling from Samaru. Samaru? So, what's your name? Gambo. Can you turn down the volume of your TV set? Alright. Can you turn down the volume of your TV set? I don't quite get what you are saying, Gambo. So we're talking about the roles of a father. Yes. 
for the responsibility of Hafa. I said start starting with provision. Mm -hmm. But I, start, I started with the basic understanding the responsibility. Mm -hmm. And what the responsibility of Hafa is provision. Provision should come natural for your family. Mm. I said that providing for your family is not an achievement. It's not an achievement. It is a responsibility. Okay. Just like a dog is not celebrated for barking. Mm. It becomes a problem when a dog does not bark. Mm. It is wired. As a man, as a father, there is a wiring natural, mm. you know, by your creator for you to provide. So men who brag about their ability to provide don't understand that responsibility yet. Secondly, we have nurturing. The fathers should not so okay. should create an environment of not so okay. for their families. Okay. You understand? The fathers should be able to protect. protect. Apart from God protecting, the fathers should be able to create an atmosphere that um, that uh, that uh, that makes the family, the other members of the family, feel very protected. But you know, we have fathers today that if there is danger, they send their wives to go in front of them. <laughs> you understand? They are not many. No. They, are, they are not many. No. <laughs> And so that, you know, is a failure of manhood. Let's see. Hello? Yes. 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 What's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Aaron Emmanuel Abujit. Okay, Aaron Emmanuel, can you make your contribution? I am calling from Bangui. From? Bangui. Bangui. Downbase. Downbase. Downbase, okay. So can you make your contribution? Yes. Uh, the, what the speaker was, was saying, yes. was saying that in Africa we are living in trouble. That we are living what? Yeah, that we are, we, are, we have a communal way of living. Okay, okay, okay. Make so your contribution. All right, bye. All right. According to you, Yes. We are listening. Oh, I think we lost that call. And I was actually very interested in hearing that. Uh, it's okay, no problem. You can still try and call back. Hello? 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 Hello, I'm back. All right. Okay. My name is Dr. Kingsley Mayowa Okonoda. I'm a consultant psychiatrist and certified management consultant. I'm the chief executive officer of Network Consult Training and Development. At Network Consult, we help individuals, organizations, and communities to actualize their potentials, to cope with normal stresses of life, work productively, and make meaningful contributions to society. We do this through our training seminars, workshops, and conferences on the issues of mental health product, uh, promotion, peak performance, management consulting, and personal development. 
Among trainings, seminars, workshops that we have done for individuals and organizations like this, Network Consult also holds the Strategic Planning and Goal Setting Seminar in the first week of January annually, as well as the Financial Independence and Wealth Creation Seminar on the 1st of October every year. We also have the issues of mental health promotions on the 10th of October, which is the um, World Mental Health Day, as well as the 26th of June, the International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking. We invite you to avail yourself of any of our trainings, workshops, and conferences at Network Consult so that you can have the life of abundance that you deserve. Thank you very much. Network Consult Everyone needs a push in life Anybody can be somebody. It seems as if the, the director is um, saying that we should continue. Um, Pastor, yes. let me take this call so that we pull the questions together. Hello? Hello, Hello sir. Uh, like I was saying, Aaron Emmanuel Awuje. Aaron Emmanuel Awuje, yes. Thank you for calling yes, back. I was saying, according to you, know, I said this. Yes. He said things fall apart. Things fall apart. Okay. What, what he was saying was that. Okay. So you are saying that we are not living in communal ways again. Mm. Yeah, but you are just stating it now. You have not been able to prove it to us. What are the evidence to support what you are saying? Okay. Send a text message. 
So um, just quickly answer that your question. Ask a question about custody. Custody, yes. Yeah. People must understand that uh, when you when you are in a, a society where laws mm. apply to every situation, mm. uh, the law becomes supreme. Yeah, exactly. You understand? When it comes to custody, mm. um, where uh, there's no family understanding, mm. then the final uh, place to consult is the law. the law. What is the position of the law as far as who you know the father of that child is? Mm. But as far as our society is concerned, the accepted father is the biological father. father. That's what is accepted, you understand, by society. But we've seen, we've also began to embrace adoption mm. as a means of fathering children. Exactly. You understand? So if that father, that uh, that second person that is now coming in, mm. uh, if he's not the biological father of that child, then the only option that can qualify him to become the father of that child is the process of adoption. Let's quickly talk about adoption. Before we go, let me see if we can pull this person to conversation. All right, we go back up. Now, okay. Hello? 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 Yes. What's your name and where are you calling from? Ah, sorry. Sorry, we have those five more minutes on the program. Hello? Hello? Yes, what's your name and where are you calling from? Okay, something from Rantia. Can you make your contribution quickly? Time is not our friend. Ah, sorry about that. All right, Pastor. Adoption. Yes. Because there are issues. Yes. Um, there are issues of adoption, surrogacy. So the, yes, things. the principle of adoption is trying to remedy. Okay. Is system that fails. Like okay. we said, that the fact that the biological mother is not present does not mean there are no other systems okay. to explore, other options to explore. Okay. And adoption is one of those um, options that can be explored so that we can bring back that balance okay. that exists. It seems to me that some people believe that adopted children are not, since they are not biological, uh, they, are they, less of, they are less of children and they will no, not it have is ignorance. The okay. There are children who have been raised by adopted parents mm -hmm. and they are doing better. We've seen children who are raising in orphanages, mm -hmm. who are father figures, men who play father figures and mother figures in their life, and they are doing well. It is what is most important, like we said, is mm -hmm. not really the conception. Mm -hmm. We know that a, a, child, a human being is a combination of several factors. Mm -hmm. Genetic is also included. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. But it's not the genetic composition alone mm -hmm. that forms a human being. Mm -hmm. Experience, environment, you know, upbringing, and so forth and so forth. Let's take this uh, SMS because we just have around. Okay. He says, good day, everyone in the studio, I'm Victor. I have an issue growing up alone because my father divorced my mom and got married to another woman. And today I have issues concerning decision making to the extent that it affects me in my academic pursuit. Each time I enrolled myself in school, I ended up not graduating because of financial constraints. Please, I need help. Let me take the other SMS so that I can answer both of them together. Um, Okay, this person is just no name and all that, but says it is not good for a man not to provide food for his family. We agree with him. Yes. So, concerning the issue of Victor, Victor, all you need to do is to write it. Like you said, you, you noted that we said from the onset that mm. once there's no, that role is not, a child does not have a father role, mm -hmm. father figure in his life. Mm. It's, it creates an entrance, yes. it creates a situation mm. that will lead to the remedy. Mm. So, what Victor needs to do is to identify somebody. Okay. Who he, who he can submit to. Okay. You understand? And sometimes if, 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 if it's not the father that should come to the child. A child who see a need in their life can walk up to a man. Mm. You understand? That's why we have spiritual parenthood now. Mm -hmm. You understand? We have mentoring relationships. Mm. So you can walk up to somebody who you consider who have loved the way they live their life and ask them to play the role of the father in your life. Pastor, I must thank you, Mr. Yeah. Time is not hard. Yeah. But I know that we to have yes. said, which is actually more yeah. um, lives have been taught. Yes. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, and I want to appreciate you for the work you're doing. Thank you. As a clinical psychiatrist, I know that you're doing a lot of work. I'm going to continue to you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Um, viewers at home, we have come to the end of today's program. We have been talking on families. We have looked at what makes families. We have looked at the operations and how some of them can be remedied. We have looked at the issue of balance, we have looked at the issue of role. 
And some of the things say, he, 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 Pastor said here is that fathering is not an exclusive right of the biological father. And fathering actually goes beyond sperm donation. And any system that supports a man raising a child in room or a, a, a woman raising a child in room are not said to be the ideal system. Well, um, it's on this note that we will round up the, uh, the program today. I want to thank everybody that have called and everybody that have sent SMS. Those of you who are not able to take your call, I apologize. I just know that you will have gained one or two things. But you can still send us SMS or uh, SMS more um, and uh, we will provide answers to your uh, questions. You can join us in the conversation on our Facebook page, My World, um, with Dr. Okunoda. And uh, you can also check our uh, website, www.networkconsult.com. You can check check our Twitter and do Dr. at Dr. Okunoda, one word, D-R-O-K-O-N-O-D-A, or at Network C, one word. Until we come your way next time, same time, same station, make sure that you play safe, don't get infected. If you see any symptom, report yourself to the appropriate authorities, take care of the, your family and people around you, stay blessed. A push in life. Anybody can be somebody. Eh? Through development and building one's capacity. Financially, health wise. Everyone can be better. Cause we're taking you higher. Eh? You can be entertaining, so educated Making you so independent